So hey guys, uh, my name is Farag. Um, today I'll be talking about something that I've been working on over the past, let's say, six months or so. You know, to give a bit of a background, I started first in the big block sort of can, and then like, got introduced to later to Liquid, and I did some Covenant R&D on Liquid, like for about two, year, two years, and now um, recently exploring the lining space uh, for about a year. Um, and you know, as someone who initially comes sort of from that sort of big block camp, I've always had any objections towards lightning, uh, mainly around the UX, you know, from uh, backups to interactivity to uh, liquidity problems. You know, I've had severe objections, um, you know, if, you know, and you know, um, and like a few months ago, I tried to sort of working on a new lightning wallet to address these problems and, you know, I've come to realization um, that um, these objections, you know, the objections that I had in the past, they're all addressable in the long run, i.e., you know, page DLCs can solve the async receiving issue plus proof of payment, but um, there is still one big problem, the inbound liquidity. To me, it's like a non-starter. Um, you know, if, if you're orange pulling someone for the first time, you cannot receive, what happens is you get a swap somewhere, you swap in, and it doesn't scale. Um, and you know, to me, like, if something works, you know, 90% of the time doesn't work, 10%, to me, doesn't work. Like, it has to be zero, zero friction. So I sort of, um, sort of try to come up with solutions to address these problems. And then today I'll be presenting uh, any sort of alternative layer 2 protocol. It all started uh, as a wallet idea, a lightning idea, based on channel factories and all that. Um, and it later evolved into a layer 2 on its own. Uh, you know, at some point I realized, okay, what I'm building is lightning, but um, it really is like a new layer two on its core. You know, at its core, it's like internally, it's uh, like a new uh, off-chain protocol. Um, so the protocol is, it requires APO or CTV, a new covenant primitive to work. That's not something we can do on Bitcoin today. Uh, we can do it in Bitcoin Inquisition Signet, and I think that's how we're gonna start. Uh, but um, to give a high-level overview of, um, um, first of all, we don't have, uh, we haven't settled on a name yet for the protocol. But to give a high level overview, the, the protocol has no liquidity constraints. Um, it's a simple protocol, it mimics the on chain UX. Uh, just like you do an on chain wallet, you have an address you can receive, send, hold, simple. You don't have any interactivity requirements. Um, and you don't have to, you know, acquire inbound liquidity to on board to the system in the first place. Um, you don't have to run a server, you, know, you can use your smartphone, uh, we don't have much interactivity requirements. And every payment is takes place in a coin join round, so you don't leave your, especially receivers, they do not leave their identity. You know, in Lightning, if, you know, hubs collude or they comply with OFAC, you know, two hubs can sort of extract the payment route. If I'm using IE and LSB XYZ and you're connected to uh, ABC and they have direct channel each other, so the recipient is two out of way, then they can call you to extract the payment route because it's linked through the same HDLC, uh, the Bolt 11 hash identifier. So in this protocol, um, it's not a state channel design, it's not a roll up design of, of any sort, it's, it's really its own category. Um, so here is um, a, conver a, com a conversion table. Um, you know, comparing this protocol with Lightning on chain, also eCash, obviously eCash, you know, Charm and eCash, Fediment stuff, it's custodial. Um, so, you know, it's controversial what, you know, what a layer 2 is and not. To me, eCash doesn't fall into a layer 2 category, but it's good to compare. So, you know, on chain Bitcoin, you know, to me, Lightning is the only layer 1, uh, sorry, layer 2 of Bitcoin. You know, to, my, to me, the layer 2 definition is really like a sort of p p separate piece of software where you transact Bitcoin without polluting on-chain, but yet you can revert your coins back to on-chain without asking for a corporation. So by that definition, um, the protocol falls into a layer two category. Um, so it's self-custodial. Uh, you don't need, uh, you can unilaterally you know, revert your coins back on-chain, um, but you transact off the chain, uh, off-chain. So interactivity, well, page DLC is sold as a receiving issue, and you can generate print, and they don't have to generate pre image already offline, but you still have to sign or you know, monitor the network for channel breaches, um, you know, if you're not trusting a watchtower. Um, and, you know, just like on-chain, you don't have to be online uh, like that. 
Um, scalability wise, I think this is the number one, you know, the, the, the number one, uh, the, the biggest property we have. You know, lightning, you cannot onboard the whole planet to lightning, it doesn't scale, you know, channel openings and some rain swap ins, so out, they do not scale. Um, it's not only the on chain footprint, right? The non liquidity doesn't scale. You know, I've, you know, had this utopic idea to, you know, onboarding the whole planet to Bitcoin. You know, in a non-custodial way, I know in reality it's probably never going to happen, but I'm super obsessed with it. Uh, so I think uh, you know my goal is to be able to at least give people an option, the whole planet, uh, to onboard Bitcoin, uh, non-custodially. So in theory, uh, with this primitive, you can onboard the whole planet. In theory, on-chain footprint-wise, there are probably other challenges. Uh, but the point is, you don't consume any pretty much, it's, you don't consume any pretty much footprint, on-chain footprint. Everything is off-chain, pretty much. Um, unlike in Lightning, you have to touch on-chain sometimes. Um, of course, on-chain is the worst. Nothing touches on-chain, doesn't scale anything that touches. Um, and privacy, again, guys, um, it's also controversial, right? Um, Lightning versus on-chain privacy. To me, Lightning is worse than Unchained, but to many people, they argue Unchain is worse than Lightning. Uh, but um, with this primitive, you know, whenever you make a payment, the payment it, it takes place in a coin join round, um, sort of like an off chain coin join protocol. Um, so, and you know, coin joins today, they are mostly used for, you know, dark market use cases, maybe, but um, here, the anonymity set is everyone. And anyone who involves in a payment, does you know, uh, you know that payment uh, is in a coin join, um, in a mixing blended mixing round maybe that's pretty correct. So onboarding, um, you know, again you don't have any onboarding setup. You know, you onboard someone to be, you, you want to tip someone who, you know, you just onboard you know orange pill someone and you can you can receive payment like like on chain, but it but it scales. Um, so it's a simple protocol. I mean, it's not a state channel design. I think um, it's, it's you know conceptually simple. It's simple to reason about. Um, so there are two parties, uh, users and uh, the operators. And operators are akin to you know service providers in Lightning LSPs. Um, and in fact, factory operators are also LSPs in this protocol. Um, they can run Lightning routers to we can pay with this protocol Lightning invoices. It's interoperable with Lightning. It's not a competitor by any means. It's in fact much you know it's, it's, it complements Lightning more. So users, they're not interactive entities, they hold and receive coins just like they do on-chain, but they do it entirely off-chain. And factory operators, just like LSPs, they provide liquidity to the protocol, but it's slightly different. In fact, Lightning uses liquidity more efficiently because channels are bi-directional. Here, you, it's more like a one-directional design. The factory operator has to constantly provide liquidity to the protocol. Um, so the protocol again. Um, the idea requires um, the, a, a counter primitive. We need a counter primitive to constrain transaction outputs of a spending transaction. Um, and we can use CTV for that, um, which is a bit controversial. And we can use M APO to emulate CTV. Uh, we can emulate it by hard coding of the signature 65 by signature and 33 by the unknown hotkey type. In a script to emulate the CTV use case. There are other alternatives to catch and some other combinations in even simplicity, uh, but um, it requires a, um, a common primitive to constrain outputs in advance of creating a Bitcoin output. <coughs> so it's just like a coin join. Um, you have a set of coins. The coins are Bitcoin transaction outputs, but they, they live off the chain. They, they ideally never touch on chain, but you can, of course, you know, literally revert, but um, the coins live off the chain. Think of like a UTXO set that lives entirely off the chain. So you have a set of coins in your wallet, um, software, um, from one set to a new, just, just forget about the dust limit, just to put things simple, um, from one to a million sets. So the design is, um, the design starts with a factory. So factory, it's like a channel factory, I name it factory, it could be something else, the naming, um, but because it's similar to channel factories, I name it factory. Um, the factories are, is a shared UTXO model. So a factory is a Bitcoin transaction output, it's a shared UTXO, um, and it has a bunch of nested coins in it. The coins I mentioned earlier, um, 
they live in these factories, under these factories, they nest in these factories. A new and a factory operator is the one who creates a factory, say, in every five seconds, to put things simple, but, um, the, you know, contrary to coin drains, coin drains take, can take from hours to days, a coin drain session. This one, it takes, think of a coin drain round that takes place in a regular basis in every, say, five seconds. So every single one of these factories or a coin join, they're like a coin, like a blinded mixing round, and it's operated by the, the factory outputs are funded by the factory operator. And here is what a factory looks like. Uh, this is the factory that we that the factory operator sort of uh, creates, crafts in every five seconds. So you have even one or more inputs to fund, and you have a coins output and a connectors output and a factory change. So coins output, um, it has a bunch of coins, you know, coins, coins that you have, coins live in this output, and each coin is a 12 to just like lightning. Like, um, the initial idea was to have lightning channels instead of coins that to nest, that to nest in the coins output. But the things have evolved over time, so instead of having lightning channels in one UTXO, just like coin pools, factories, we have coins, and coin is, it's like a one one time use only uh, channel. Uh, you spend it and you create new coins, just like on chain. Um, and the idea is that you have a bunch of coins that con commit to a single transaction called output uh, called coins. You can unilaterally, you know, reveal the coins content, the factory content. Um, sort of the coins have like a, a script path closure, and anyone who knows the sort of the template hash, the coins content, can reveal. Of the content and the connectors output, the second output in a factory has a bunch of connectors similarly, but this one has more like a withdrawal tree update, top lift update, verify style. Uh, uh, withdrawal tree. Uh, the difference is you, um, you know, we have connectors. Connectors are also Bitcoin transaction outputs that commit to this output, connectors output. Um, they are commitments just like coins. But the difference is they um, you have to reveal one by one. Uh, you have to reveal connectors one by one. In coins, you have to reveal them all at once. Um, so the primitive, I mean, the protocol is at its core, relies on anchor time of contract. This is a new buzzword I made up. Um, it's a TLC, so this is a comparison table. You know, HTLCs are the absolute worst. Um, you know, as soon receiving, you, know, you can't create a pre-image when you're offline. HDLC solved that. Also, you know, proof of payment is a bit of a gray area in HDLCs. Um, but um, ATLCs check all the boxes for HDLCs do, but um, differently we have, you know, HDLC, ATLCs can, um, has no liquidity constraints. So you don't have any inbound liquidity requirement. You, you receive, it's like a magic button, you put, push a button and you receive like, whatever you deserve, like on, like on on-chain. So to illustrate things simple, simpler, so we have a coin, there have a bunch of coins. Um, you know, each one of these coins is a 12-2. 12 12-2 between the coin owner and the factory operator, just like lightning. Uh, like a 12-2 between me and my channel partner. Think of channel partner as the factory operator, like a central hub. I have a 12 2 I'm a co-signer, a bunch of coins. Um, and I join, if I want to spend these coins, right? Like my UTXOs, I want to spend them. And I join a factory session, just like joining a coin join session. Uh, and the factory operator is a blinded coordinator. And I want to sort of I register my coins first on the left. I registered like in a coin join, you register inputs and outputs in the signing phase. You register the coins, and these coins are from the previous factories, right? Um, you get paid from coins from someone else in the past. Um, and you create, you now register for new coins, uh, uh, payout coins or plus change uh, in, in, in the round. Um, and you know, in this round there are many participants, like you can have like thousands of transactions, you know, coins in a, in a coin join. Uh, here, you know, you still have the same limit, but uh, with Tableau, if they verify, you can go be millions. Um, but the idea is to have, you know, you, it's like a coin join on chain UX, you have coins on the left, you're spending, and you're creating new coins. You're destroying coins and you're creating new coins on the right. So, these coins are, you know, again, these coins are commitments. So, the factory operator here, right, we have a session, 
uh, a factory session, um, and the factory operator is trying to create a new factory, right? Um, and the factory operator in his factory templates, I mean, the factory he's crafting, um, is placing these coins, coins that we register um, among many other participants. And then the factory operator places a, a set of additional outputs in the factory template called ATLC connectors. So ATLC connectors are added to factory, the number of spending coin times on the left. So we are spending N coins, and the factory operator adds N ATLC connectors. Um, we are creating M new coins. And what happens next? You know, we did the input registration port, the output registration port, and it's, it's the, the, the signing phase. So, of course, connectors and coins are mixed. It's a mixing round. So when I register a coin on the left, operator gives me blinded credentials so that I can register for the new coins. Um, and then in the signing phase, um, I attach ATLC and ATLC to my coin in order to sign, to, to really lock my coins in So for the factory. So, you know, this is similar to Lightning, right? You have, think of coin as a tool to one-time use channel, Lightning channel. You attach an ATLC instead of HDLC, and from there you sign the ATLC with the two of two to connect to an ATLC connector. So with that ATLC, you're signing an off-chain transaction, like one state update. Simple, uh, one state update only. Uh, you're signing an ATLC uh, from the two of ATLC, two of the from the ATLC to uh, connect to an ATLC connector. Um, and you do the same for all other coins. So you sign, um, you know, all participants in a the round, they add ATLC to their coin and connect that ATLC to its connector. Um, and if someone hesitates to, you know, add an ATLC, they, it's, it's, you know, you ban, you get by, that you, you know, the factory of your bans, you know, bans you from the, the session. So this is what the off-chain transaction looks like. It's you know pretty simple. The you know the ATLC is a two of two. I'm the co-signer. I'm I'm spending this coin, um, and I'm paying out to Bob someone under a new factory, um, and I'm signing this off-chain transaction to do so to connect my ATLC to your connector. I'm signing the ATLC the first input itself. The first input is the ATLC I'm signing. A call signing from the 202. Again, the, call, the other call signer is the factory operator. Um, and the second input, I place um, an ATL, a, the ATLC connector from the new factory. The ATLC in the first input I'm spending is from a previous factory. The connector, ATLC connector, the second input is from the new factory. Um, and ATLC connectors, they carry dust. Um, and they're a single SIG spendable by the factory operator. ATLC is a two of two. Connectors are single SIG factory operator. So, in the outputs, we place um, uh, one output for the factory operator to sweep, uh, to claim his funds, to, to claim these funds. Um, so, by doing that, as you remember, we have coins uh, in a factory. Um, and by doing that, uh, we, you know, the, the factory operator created a set of new coins, right? It's an on-chain transaction. He provides liquidity for these coins. Um, and, in, and, and the factory operator now has to claim my coin, should be able to claim my coin, my previous coins in here, right? And in order to do so, the factory has to exist. Um, the factory operator should not double spend this factory. If the factory operator double spends, factory operator is not able to claim my ATLC, my first input, because I signed the off-chain transaction with SIG hash all, and it commits to the second input, odd point, and it is the, the, the transaction ID of the factory. So in order for an ATLC to be claimed uh, by the factory operator, um, the factory operator should not double spend the factory. If there is a double spend, um, it's not atomic, it's an atomic construction. I can, uh, my ATLC is not no longer redeemable. I can, I can, uh, I can do an unritual closure for my ATLC. 
um, with the script path. Um, so it provides an atomic payout construction um, of an agri of an agreed tra uh, transfer schedule here. So, um, so here is a bit of a, a logical overview. So, you know, you remember we have coins um, coming to a coins that are put in a factory, um, and here is what it looks like logic-wise. So we have, um, you know, operator it's like the circle ones are the UTXOs and the rectangle ones are the transactions. So the operator funds a factory. In this case, the coins, the coins output, um, and it has two possible spans, two, two script paths. The first secret path, after four weeks, the factory operator can claim, uh, solely can claim this output. And he, you know, and he funded that output in the first place. So after four weeks, um, he can claim it. Um, the factory, to, so to speak, expires after four weeks. Um, which means that coins can only be in a factory uh, can only be revealed and claimed within that time frame, for a big time frame. You should be, you should spend your coins in that time frame. If you have coins that are about to expire, you do a self swap. You send your coins back back to yourself to reset that timer. So there is a little interactivity requirement. You have to be online in every two weeks to speak, but uh, it's not as you know harsh as lightning. Um, the second script path with no delay. Anyone can reveal the factory content, the coins that nest in that factory. And this happens in a non-collaborative case, i.e. the factory operator is not responding anymore for a long period or you know, non, not collaborating with me. I can do an analytical closure. I can reveal the coins in a factory, in a, in a given factory in the past, and I can, from there, um, from there, um, from the coin here, I can um, I can claim my coins. Uh, but a coin has again a lifetime of four weeks, right? After four weeks, here coin is claimable by the operator who funded the coin in the first place. Within the first two weeks, the coin is claimable by the recipient, the owner of the coin. Um, and just like uh, you know. HDLC timeouts, um, which is um, by default set to 24 hours, right? The CLTV delta. Um, just and think of it as two weeks. Um, an HDLC in flight HDLC with two weeks uh, with a two week timeout. Uh, the, the sender can get a refund. Uh, can that, um, after two weeks, the sender who sent that the, the coin, funded the coin, can get a refund uh, in that time frame. Just like claiming an in-flight HDLC in Lightning, and of course, after four weeks, it's claimable by the factory operator. Why the reason why we have this second sort of closure, sort of uh, time window of period? Um, because after four weeks, the factory operator can claim it, but the recipient cannot be online. She may not be online, may not be able to claim it. Um, so it's going to go to factory operator. So as a sender. I should be able to claim it if recipient is not responding. Um, and from the coin output, the coin itself, each coin has three closures, um, three script path closures. Um, the first one is within, you know, within four weeks, anytime. Um, the, the, the recipient himself can claim the coin. And the second closure is after two weeks. The, the, in the last two weeks, with a rel relative delay, the sender of the coin can get a refund, like an HDLC timeout. Uh, I mean, the, the control, the, the coin, the control of the coin, is now in the sender's hand. Um, and of course, after four weeks, you know, if this so coin is revealed, right, um, the factory operator can sweep it. Um, the first two uh, closures are literally the same, except. And the first one is claimable by the the, re, the, the recipient. The second closure is redeemable, redeemable by the sender. Um, so from here, you know, you can. So if you if your factory operator is not collaborative, you reveal your coin in a factory um, in a non-collaborative case or non-responsive case, and then you you do a spend from the first script path closure from the first tap leaf. 
um, to create this transition. A, you create an ATLC, sort of you attach an ATLC uh, from the first uh, tap leaf. Um, and you can immediately do it within four weeks. And this state transition is called recipient claim. And this is very similar to L2. Um, and after doing that, um, after 24 hours delay, uh, the, you can get a refund. But if you have attached an ATLC, like connected an ATLC to your connector before, and you, you're, not, you're no longer open an office coin, you already spent it, so if you try to double spend an ATLC, um, the factory operator can claim it because you already attached an ATLC to an ATLC connector. Can the factory operator can immediately uh, sort of sweep points back to himself, all. Um, or if you haven't spent it already and uh, if your operate, the operator is not responding, not collaborating, you can do it from C to A and we wait for this delay period and then you know re reading your coins and in the second closure is the same but for the sender uh, the sender can spend his coins in that two week time frame in the last two weeks um, so the protocol it looks like um, doesn't look like lightning it's like a new unique protocol primitive but it's interoperable with lightning it has lightning interoperability at its core just like adding coins and connectors to a factory, the factory operator can add HDLCs and PHDLCs to a factory template. Um, so a user, you know, in this case, at least want to pay Bob uh, 21 sets with Lightning, right? At least is, is this protocol user and Bob is a Lightning user. Um, at least can buy pay Bob. Uh, and at least have a bunch of like six, six coins in here and you know in the protocol you can have multiple factories you know factory operators um, and you can have your UTX so you know your coins can be distributed among other operators so you have two of two between at and X here and in, this, uh, in the other factory your two other coins are two of two between U and Y and the other two coins are between U and Z and you can sort of do an MPP style payout. Uh, you join three factory sessions. You have six coins. You register for two coins each in each factory session. And you and the, the factory operators add HDLC, HDLCs to their factories. And then they forward HDLCs to Bob from there. So you can do MPP sort of, you can pay lightning invoice by destroying your coins just like how you create new coins. Um, similarly, you can also get paid from Lightning with uh, HDLC nested ATLCs or page DLC nested ATLCs. Um, so the protocol is async receiving by design. I mean, it's similar to silent payments. So if, you know, if out is the factory art point, the, the funding input, um, it's a unique ID. Um, and we can come, you know, whenever you want to pay, make a payment, the idea is to uh, tweak the, the recipient's, you know, recipient has a dedicated well-known public key, like an NPUB, um, and you tweak that public key with, um, with a unique commitment, just like what you do in silent payments, um, and you first create a shared secret between the sender and the recipient, and you do, you calculate a payment commitment, you put F out and have this unique random data plus uh, the shared secret plus the senders and the recipient public key. This also provides proof of payment when the recipient claims this payment, this ATLC, uh, you know, this coin. Um, and you add, you add, you tweet add your, the recipient public key, well known public key, with the payment commitment times generator. And you send this uh, the commitment out of band i.e. where a Nostra DM to a recipient. So a recipient can look up the factory, uh, at that particular factory, um, and can okay, I see, okay, I have coins, payout coins in this factory, and, I can, and recipient can claim it, claim these coins from there. 
So it prevents address reuse. Each coin has a unique sort of script pub key, different sort of you know public keys, co-signer keys. Um, plus, it solves the async receiving issue. Um, so the, the 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 protocol can have also a penalty design similar to Lightning. So you might wonder, okay, everything is on chain in the commitments. So if I'm receiving a coin. I need to wait for a confirmation for settlement, uh, but we can have a penalty design to reflect lightning so that we can have an instant settlement assurances in here also. So, um, you know, in a factory, uh, the first input, right, the funding input, um, I mean, it records a new software also, XOR or OPCAT. Uh, we can uh, constrain the signature first half the nonce to a particular field in the script, um, so that if the factory operator uh, double spans the factory, as a user, I can forge the operator's private key, and so that I can, as a user, redeem my previously spent coins. Sort of, it provides um, like uh, inbound liquidity, sort of instant settlement uh, trade-off also here, without compromising on the protocol design. Um, there is one uh, another thing, um, you know, without, with or without this uh, sort of penalty design, when you have a coin, unconfirmed um, zero-conf coins, um, you can of course spend them to pay someone, uh, to create new coins for someone. Um, you, I, I mean, you can hand over zero-conf coins um, because coin is a two of two, and the new coin is also a two of two, and the uh, operator is a co-signer of both coins. Um, but you can also pay a lightning invoice with a coin if it's zero conf. Even if it's zero conf, you can spend a coin to pay a lightning invoice because um, it's a two of two. You're spending from a two of two coin where the factory operator is a co-signer. And the factory operator is also a lightning router. Uh, the same guy is also a router and can forward the HDLCs to and, re and recipients. So you can have an unconfirmed coin and the protocol yet be able to pay a lightning invoice um, instantly. Um, so it pretty much sums it up. Um, thank you guys for listening. I will, I'm pretty, pretty much sure you guys have any questions. Happy to have you shoot it over. I want to start the questions. Sure. And uh, I'm going to break the ice because I want to ask a question that might not make sense sure, to make sure everyone else feel comfortable. So I'm doing this for you all. Uh, sure, uh, but, but one thing that, you know, some of this was a little bit over my head. One, one thing I'm curious about is, uh, is the nature of the privacy kind of like necessary for this to work? Or is that something that is like an added feature? That wasn't clear to me. It's like an, um, I mean, the protocol can perfectly work without coin join. It's like, I thought it's a bit, in fact, you know, this idea has evolved over time. The initial design was a lightning sort of channel factory design and it's evolved into like a coin join design. Um, this protocol is totally doable uh, the idea without the coin join components, uh, but I thought it's a, it's a nice addition to have. So I, I think I missed I, I think I missed an important step because it seemed like all the owner has to do the, the factory person just has to wait four weeks and then they can just take everyone's money. And it was starting to make more sense at the end where that was like intended as the penalty. But I must have missed why would they why would they not just set up shop, take the didn't you say that the didn't you say that the um, the person just waits four weeks and then it becomes spendable by the owner? The factory. Yes. So you guys think the houses have been in the government work for like a similar or like similar case, right? Yeah, I mean the, the penalty mechanism is for instant settlement assurances, right? If you want, if you're a vendor, i.e., if you demand instant settlement, I mean, you better use Lightning. Lightning is great for that use case. Uh, but um, if you demand instant settlement for some reason, that's what uh, the penalty mechanism is a nice addition here. Uh, but it, the protocol works perfectly without it. I mean, because you can pay Lightning invoices with zero comp points. Um, you have like this four week uh, like timeout uh, because um, you know, in channel factory design, i.e., yeah, you can open a bunch of channels bundled together in one, but you at some point have to reveal them, and it pollutes on chain. So by having a one-directional design, um, the, the, the liquidity, 
of the coins, you know, excels some, at some point, right? It's like a one directional channel. So that when all coins in a factory are spent, sort of liquidity is on the factory operator's side, right? In, in a four week time frame, assuming all coins are spent in a four week time frame. So that factory operator can sleep his coin, I mean, the, the factory. Yeah, but you, when you say spent, you mean uh, in the fact, within the factory on your two? Uh, sweeping is on chain. Sweeping involves an on chain. No, 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 spend. Just normal spend. Uh, like a spend in the protocol? They are on chain. Uh, they're off chain coins. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's off chain. Spending coins, they're entirely off chain. The, the only on chain footprint is the factory. You know, we have this factory, even one or more inputs and like four, three outputs in every five seconds. And you, when you spend a coin and you, and you create new coins, so you spend coins from a previous factory, and that spending is off-chain. It, it doesn't touch a big off-chain coin join. I got that part. Yeah, it's an off-chain coin join. Um, if I may, I think, I think what you're asking is, um, how do you prevent your coins from getting sweeped in a factory? I, I believe the answer yeah. is you have to keep moving. You've got to keep, keep, keep jumping from one yeah, yeah. factory to If your coins are about to expire, right, um, you, do, you send coins back to yourself. Yeah, but what if someone just says they didn't get my message or whatever? Oh yeah, it's, it's atomic. So I'm DMing you a message, right? Okay, I send you a coin. If you don't get the message after two weeks, I get a timeout refund. I mean, then I'm able to, as a sender, I can re redeem the coins I've sent. You pull it, the whole thing. You pull on to layer one. Uh, the, the whole thing is on off chain. Um, the the closures are on the chain. I mean, the closures you have the ability. You know, here, you know, the first two weeks, you um, the, the recipient can only add an ATLC. In the last two weeks, the sender gets a, you know, I say, a refund. I've been sending this all, I've been sending this for 15 days and nothing's happening. I just want to get my money back out of this yeah, factory. Yeah, after 15 days, um, you go to a different factory. No, 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 the same so, factory. Uh, you, it's in your, because the two of two, uh, the, you know, is unchanged. You're still on the same coin. How many people do you think would be in each factory? A uh, thousand. I mean, if it's an update, template, update, verify design, it's millions. Yeah, but don't you think, like, I thought the factory design was really flawed in that if any single person in the factory stops stops uh, responding, the whole thing has to be drawn. Yeah, exactly. The disaster scenario, yeah. I mean, so it's, that's it's crazy to have more than, like, 20, right? That would be, like, already pushing the... Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the disaster scenario also goes for lightning. If someone, you know, miner is uh, broadcast all states, I mean, it's a disaster scenario. I get it. Um, the fact but you can easily join the factory with like zero coins or like five dollars, and then what it would take to bring the factory on chain is a factory transaction is like 20, 40 times the size of a normal transaction. Yeah. So the ideal, you know, ideally in the end we should have a top tip up there sort of design for the coins so that you are only redeeming the coins you're interested in. But yeah, I mean the coin is below dust, like one set of what was coin. In theory you can claim it, but um, economically it doesn't make sense. But what the protocol does is it sets the incentives right so that the factory operator doesn't cheap. I, I think that also goes for the, to, to lightning. But you have the ability to, to claim that one Satoshi. Although it's not economically in, uh, I, but I would just like to make sure that I understand because I think I don't understand it right. So it's like a, it's like a bunch of off-chain coin joins, and then you, uh, you on layer one you spend a, you spend in, you join the factory. Oh, uh, so you have coins, right? I mean, you yes. assuming you have coins, but I mean the first. I'm I have Bitcoin on layer one. Okay, okay. So, so the first time, have you onboard to to the protocol, right? Yes. You have on chain you take so on Bitcoin chain, and you want to onboard. Yes. Um, you're using it could be you know you know you can withdraw from Bitfinex or something an exchange that supports the protocol, right? Um, so that the exchange has coins already uh, in the protocol. Um, you can get paid from it, but if you have because I'm already onboarded to layer two. Yeah, yeah, according to layer two, you have a Bitcoin on chain. Uh, but you take the first so. person opens the channel. Uh, there, there are no channels here. I mean, the, the factory, sorry. No, like they have a wallet. Yeah. You, I, Adam, I said, I tell you, hey, do you know what is Bitcoin? You say no. Okay, you go over the wallet, I go to the lower wallet, and I send you some stats. That means I have to have Satoshis. That's the first step. The first step. Like, if you go to school and try to. Orange peel keys, but I think doing that is really hard. Then I think this is what he's saying: is no, no nodes, no channels, it's just wallets. 
right off the bat, that is what you're saying. <laughs> you're saying? Has one thing. Thing. The, the first, the first, like, if Bitfinex is already onboarded into the bank, like, they already have the coins. Like, yeah, they have, uh, we have to call them first, they will call them the Barack coins. Yeah. 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 Well, they have, they on chain set, but, like, they send it into yeah, these layer two, two, layer two coins. Yes. Bitfinex has these layer two coins. I can get them, I can get them, and I, I send my public key to Bitfinex. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know, so probably keep the key, and then I have a wallet that supports this. Yeah. They, when they're refreshing it every five seconds, they refresh it into something where it swaps out the. There's a new Merkle root or whatever that has this, instead of something that never contains my key, uh-huh. it's now something that contains my key. So now I'm onboarded into oh. this scheme. So, yes. um, you, so the fault is like you have Bitfinex. Yep. Bitfinex, assuming has already coined in a protocol. And you want to withdraw from Bitfinex to your uh, this new protocol wallet. You have a, like an NPOC dedicated public key. You, you place the public key to Bitfinex interface, and they make you a payout. And Bitfinex, of course, has coins. Two of the coins between the factory operator, and Bitfinex joins the factory operator next session, and 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 creates new coins, spends the his coins, and creates new coins for you. The payout coins for you, and and, and you're a co-signer on this. You know, you're a co-signer. Of your coins, but you can do a refund. It has a script had refund closure. Now, if you get a coin, yes, under the new factory, Bitfinex can prove it. It's an on-chain commitment. They can prove it to you. Okay, I paid you. You have a, you have a new coin. You have a bunch of coins under a new factory, or Bitfinex can also DM you. Okay, um, and is Bitfinex also every like every block rolling over like an output or something. Um, you know, fast be because my public key is making yeah. it into something. So when Bitfinex joins, I mean, if there are payouts, constant payouts in Bitfinex, Bitfinex joins a factory session in every five seconds, yes. Yeah, but, but isn't there some, is it some, something, on, something that's at least 32 bytes long on layer one has to change when I onboard, right? Um, so the few, are you asking for about the first onboarding step? Like, yeah, I have on chain layer one Bitcoin now. Okay. I join. Okay. And how do you join? How do you have coin? Okay. So, the first initial onboarding protocol step. So, you have a layer one UTXO on your hardware wallet, and you want to convert that Bitcoin into the protocol coins. So, you deposit your single set, you tap paid to tap with coins, into, deposit into a two of two on chain Bitcoin UTXO. Uh, two of two, just like coins. But and coins are, a, you know, a channel. It doesn't have to be. It's, it's, be it's, it's, like it's, it's like a channel, yeah. yeah. Like a channel, but one time use only channel, yeah. Okay. Uh, two, of two, two of two, and from there, you can either pay a lightning invoice, I mean, if it's a real channel, or you can, because you can get paid from a HDLC nested coin mm-hmm. in the protocol, mm-hmm. or you um, or you can, you know, coins are off chain, but you're created an on chain coin, right? Two of two. Yes. And you can join a coin join with that on chain coin. Coin. You can register that coin, on chain coin, um, for the next coin chain session, the factory session. Did you want to go for it? Yeah. So I just wanted to like really quickly recap it in my mind to make sure I understand it and then ask my question. So the factory is putting money into this transaction to create coins. And then if I have money, I want to buy into this contract and we're going to have some secret that we share out of band where I can control where you spend those coins. So, so yeah. you're using the connectors to do it in an atomic way. Yeah, you use connectors to do it in an atomic way. Someone pays you, and in factory, you're not aware of it. I mean, the factory is there, whether it's confirmed or not. Factory is there, you're in the way, but you realize, okay, I have an DM. Okay, okay. I, someone says, okay, pay, I paid you in this factory. You go check it out, and you go check it out. Okay, in real. I know the factory content because he sent me uh, the receipt. The sender sent me the factory content and the factory ID, the transaction ID, and I go check it out. Okay, there's a factory. There are coins. You know, you do the, you know, you do the, you verify the content and all that, and okay, I see there are a bunch of coins, and then with each coin, I mean, the receipt, the sender can tell you the index, you know, in what index your coins are in the factory, and then you check it out, okay, calculate, you know, the the, the script type key, okay, I'm the co sign, my co signer key is this, this tweak add, and the co signer key is known, publicly known, the LSP, I mean, the factory record is public key is known. You, you do the, you, I mean, you calculate the tap script, and okay, this is coin, this is the script pub key, this coin is mine. Okay, so are the connectors also their own outputs as well? Um, connectors are also transaction outputs, yes. Um, okay. Just like coins, they have commitments, yes, just like coins. The difference is connectors are not 2 of 2, they're single sig, and they carry DOS value. 
Okay, I, I, I sort of understood that. Um, one thing that you brought up that I didn't understand is the Zor operation um, as like a, as a penalty. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit? That flew right over my head. Sure. So you're receiving a coin, right? You have this coin, i.e., coin number one. Let's say it carries a thousand sets. Um, you have this coin. The factory is not confirmed. It's in the memory. But you demand it's in settlement. Uh, what happens is um, the factory, uh, you can accept it as zero conf as it is. You can say, okay, I consider this payment payout inst uh, you know, instant settled. Although it's not confirmed, because the factory operator is to double spend this, you know, this factory transaction, you uh, forge the factory operator's private key. And if you have, you know, previously spent coins in a protocol, uh, you, you know, you have coins in the past, you spent them already, but because you can forge the factory operator's 202, the private key, you can forge the 202, and you can claim your previously spent coins. Okay, so because you've already done business, um, and so yeah, are you, you using some, an existing yeah. trans data from an existing transaction and this new transaction to try and uh, forge the factory operator's key? Yeah, if you've already on board, yeah, if you have, assuming you already have, just like Lightning, when you're on board, but if you have previous coins um, and you, you already spent, then you can, you can penalize your partner from there. But it also it sets the incentives right. Um, but other than that, you can pay a lightning invoice. I mean, if you just got on board, you cannot have instant settlement US because you don't have any previously spent coin. What you can do is uh, you can you can still consider it instant because I don't know you can pay a lightning invoice from it, and a lightning invoice involves as instant settlement by nature. Do you run into issues with um, fees for the transaction clearing? Uh, so this is um, a liquidity network, just like Lightning. So there are on-chain fees, but I mean, it's a factory commitment. So it's the, you know, this is like 250 V bytes, like one transaction, right? It's an on-chain transaction, and there are like say thousand participants, and uh, and the fees are divided by that number of participants, that like 250 sets divided by that number of participants. There are also plus liquidity fees. Because Lightning and this are all both liquidity networks. In fact, this. Liquidity is used more less efficiently here. Thank you. Sure. Right. Cool. And I guess uh, one question. So in this diagram, like the stuff on the left is confirmed. So you can see three outputs, mm -hmm. and then that coins output is sort of an op CTV kind of thing. Yes, you exactly. Span out to a hundred. Yeah. Um, and so you know when everyone's using this, they see okay, like my my share is coming out of that. Um, when, okay, so and then there's this like four week delay, say, when, let's say there's a scenario where everyone's aware, like, okay, this operator, this factory guy, he's offline, he's dead. Um, and so we know, like, why wait four weeks? We, we need to close. What is the process that any, let's say that large N there is, is 100. Is it the case that any of the 100 can then close at the current state, or do you need, like, what, what is the process? When oh yeah, sure, so uh, it's, so you reveal the coins, but that's not enough to claim. So from each reveal coin, you also have to do a claim, a sort of closure from each coin, and then you wait for 24 hours to then finally settle, just like L2. Okay, and so that, is that a multi-stage fan out, or is that like, okay, you spend coins, you get like 100, different outputs and then each one of those people have to sweep on their own or yeah, yeah. so I mean this is a bit of a, it's a less a slightly less efficient design because if you are to claim just one one coin you have to reveal all coins. Okay. That's what up the up the you know tap up the verified souls. Yeah. Or CTV you can you can you, know, you can yeah. emulate it with CTV but um, ideally with TX hash we can emulate it perfectly. Um, but um, in the current design, you have to reveal all the coins to spend to to redeem your own or your owns, um, and from there you do uh, another spend from the coin yeah. um, and wait, and then you redeem it. You, okay. you sweep your funds. Yeah. So the trade-off is sort of if you if you think it's unlikely. Well, yeah, and yeah. So there's trade-offs of like, okay, if you make it a tree, then worst case is worse, but. If it's all at once, then you have this sort of brittleness problem where there's too many people, one person posts it, and then it sort of ruins it for everyone. Yeah. Else. Yeah, so this is, okay, got it. Cool. Sure. Um, sure. Um, 
I have a, I have a question about you know um, you said before that I need to you know connect as a receiver right I need to connect to a factory right so you don't have to connect you don't know who the factory is you just got an orange pill and you don't know who, who you know you just download a wallet I mean, I mean you know the factory is because it's like a factory wallet operated a wallet operated by a factory and I send you a coin. Um, I could send you a coin from a different factory too. Like it can be two different wallets. I use factory ABC, use factory XYZ. Uh, but it's an interoperable design, right? Um, you can I can send you coins, but I'm, the coins I'm sending you is 12 to between. You know, say I'm using factory XYZ. You have maybe some coins with ABC. I'm sending you coins, and the coins are between you and XYZ, my factory. Your world is compatible with other factories too. Sort of, you can recognize other fact your coins with other factories. So yeah, so yeah my your question was like, um, okay, you basically when you DM me, hey, go look it up. You have a, um, a payment coming to you. I that DM, I mean, not that DM, but I will recognize the pub key, the well-known pub key of factories that way. So I know where to look it up. Yeah, where, exactly. You know. In the DM, yeah, I also tell you who the factory is, okay. operator is, how the key is, yeah. So this factory transaction, is it sitting on chain or in the mail? Um, you know, is it confirmed? It, it can, I mean, some of them are confirmed, you know, the new ones are in the mempool. Okay, so if they're sitting in the mempool, you can push things out of the mempool. Yeah. If the mempool overflows and things like that. Yeah, we need, you know, fee bumping doesn't work here because, I mean, uh, because if you change the, if you add a fee, you know, increase the fee, the transaction ID changes, so uh, it, it breaks the atomicity of the name. So ideally, you should do a CPFP style, of, uh, you know, bumping. So we should either have another output spendable by the fact, I mean, we have a change, yeah. So you can do CPFP style bumping that way without no. affecting the TX ID. So theoretically, I can use this factory transaction. It's sitting in the mempool. Mm -hmm. I use it to pay somebody. I get the goods. And then I do some shenanigans in the mempool, it gets thrown out of everybody's mempool, and the payment never happens. Yeah, the, the, that's the thing, right? Factory operators should make sure that, yeah, the, this, this, this is going to be confirmed. You should have a factory operator because otherwise, factory operator is not able to claim coins that he, he, you know, that he sent. Yeah, but then, like, the incentive of factory operator, like, making sure it's confirmed mm -hmm. is quite expensive process, especially. If Right, like people are trying to fix it right now, but under the current rules and the map, we can get evicted with sure. people doing weird things. Should be, there has to be a lot of workarounds on that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, making sure that uh, that's this, So, the, the factory, uh, like if I want to use it for payments, I can start using it, I don't know, will not use the six block rules, but something like that. So, so this is in many ways like slow. Yeah, I mean, if you have previously spent coins, uh, you can penalize factory operator uh, that way, or you can. I mean, I think uh, Lightning is better suited for vendors who demand instant settlements. I think, like, I have this analogy: Lightning is UDP, this is TCP. That TCP, like, you, um, you know, this protocol is more like users, really, user protocol. And Lightning is more like a vendor protocol. If you're a vendor, you know, your cash inflows are predictable. You can go acquire some liquidity from someone, and you demand instant settlement. And this is more like. You have a user, your cash inflows, you know, it's not predictable and you can use the protocol to straight on board and send and receive coins without liquidity constraints and pay lightning invoice. Okay, so, so you're making a choice between doing things immediately versus like liquidity use or something like that, if I understand correctly? That's oh, really so, so so there are, like in lightning there is the instantaneous part yeah, yeah. and here you're choosing not to have the instantaneous part, but like to make it Cheaper or like, like what, what's what's the it's trade of? The okay, yeah. So, so it's like liquid, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, they're all liquidity networks. Yeah. Okay, um, and if I have another sec, I have another question. So you said that if um, I I have one of the coins and then I try to double spend or something like that, the factory operator gets the money. Because I said so too, you cannot double spend. Did no, so, so, so I, like, did I hear, I thought that you mentioned... Oh, double something. spend in the factory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the factory operator yeah. double spends the factory. Yeah. Oh, if the factory operator tries to double spend... The factory that he then, created. Okay, yeah, so, so if I'm, I'm trying to move... Can you give a quick explanation? I have coins in the factory and now I want to give these coins to somebody. 
what happens if it's inside the factory, what happens if it's outside the factory. So in the outside, in the on-chain payout, right, uh, if you're paying someone on chain transaction, you can double spend it, um, and then, you know, if I deliver you good the products or the services, yeah, I can get right here. Um, if I, as a vendor, if I have the, this penalty assurance, I previously spent coins, I can demand a settlement here, even if factory operator double spends it. And of course, as a vendor, I make sure the factory, the coins I'm getting, the factory pays enough fees. Uh, I see the mempool, okay, this is going to be confirmed. I have, I'm, sure, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be confirmed. And if, you know, at, at some point it will confirm, right? And if there is a double spend in the mempool, well, then I penalize as a vendor my the factory operator. So I'll claim my previously spent coins anyway. So, so I'm asking, can you? I, I own Coin Zero. Now I want to give you some three satoshis, which are exact five satoshis, but okay. exactly in Coin Zero. How do we do that? So you have to Coin Zero in this factory, right? This yeah. is like a confirmed factory, and you know, deep in the, in the blockchain, um, you want to spend that zero coin and say it holds a hundred sets. And then with that coin, you join a new factory, like, okay, and you register for that coin. And because it's a two of two, the factory operator knows, the you know, factory operator funded this coin in the first place, a long time ago, and, and can, you know, authorize this coin, whether it's banned, expired, OFAC, whatever. <laughs> and you can uh, join, the, you join a new factory session and register for this coin. With coin the same operator? Huh? With the same operator? With the same operator, yeah. Okay. I cannot do this with a different operator. Oh yeah, exactly. You have to use the same operator, uh, so two of two between you and the, coin, the factory operator, um, and you join the same factory operator. You ask to to join his new session, uh, like a three minutes uh, ahead, and you join it. You register it in the registration phase. You register for coin zero, and then you register for the payout plus change coins. Create, you destroy coin zero and create new coins. Um, that, you, know, you register for the payout points, you know, based on the blind credentials you received uh, from the coin registration part. Uh, and then you, and from this coin, it's a top two. Uh, from this coin, actually, it's not a top two. The coin is not a top two. The coin is, uh, this is the scheme. From a coin, um, you have, um, the, from the first uh, closure A, ATLC. Um, so this is a pre-computed -pre sort of closure. Uh, from C to A, we can use C to be the constraint, C A to, you know, A to be the transaction output. And from here, A is a, A tells is a two of two. And from A, um, you are a co-signer of A, and the other co-signer of A, this A is the, the operator. Um, and you sign uh, a transaction, off-chain transaction, this transaction, A TLC connect. Um, um, by adding this connector, AC, EC, uh, ATLC connector UTXO to the second input, and this UTXO lives in the new factory, commits to the new factory. Um, and because you're signing with Zcash all, this transaction ID is the factory's transaction ID, commits to the factory, um, sort of forms a TX lock, you know, hash lock camera is like called TX lock, um, so that um, you sign it, so that um, you, you exchange signatures uh, with the operator, and okay, operator, you know, uh, you know, says, okay, I've got a signature, I'm good to go. I will release this uh, factory. Um, um, if you don't sign, you get banned from that session. But where in all of this are you getting the coin? I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, send you. You're money. sending me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you add it in the you know, in the coin registration yeah. phase, you added my coin, you, you did the tweet, you know, my public key, Nostra public key, you tweet, add the tweet, you send me the DM, then you added that coin, you know, you registered that coin in the session, and then it's now, it commits to the transaction ID of the factory template, um, and then it forms a TX lock for the temp tra template, um, and then the factory operator broadcasts it to mempool. So I see, okay, it's, I have, I see an unconfirmed, um, incoming a factory, and I have some coins under that factory, um, um, and I, I say, okay, I, I consider, you know, uh, I, I see the payment, and I see, okay, the factory pays enough fees, and then if there's a double, I can pay, I can spend a coin, you hand me over a zero coin, right, um, and I can spend that coin to someone else, or pay a lightning invoice with it instantly, um, and 
or I can even, you know, just hold it. Okay, so it's up to the factory operator to see that I'm not doing it twice, I'm not paying you and Dulce, for example. Yeah, if you try to do it twice, I mean, factory operator won't let you in because it's a two of two. The coin at ATLC is a two of two. Oh, but yeah. You can do it a, a second yeah. spent from the two of two. But, but what if I'm the factory operator? Uh, like, what's, what's, what, what's in it for me to lose by allowing this? Uh, for the factory operator? Yeah. Um, if, because if you do try to do it, you don't, don't double spend. Um, yeah. If you try to double spend, you get a penalty. From whom? Uh, from any, anyone. It's it's going to be made public to the whole network, and any anyone can forge my private in that case. Any participants, pre, pre private participants. And if not, um, you can just not demand it's a settlement. Like you may not be interested in demanding it's a settlement. You can just receive coins and wait for it to confirm. If you don't want, you know, to to make it to consider it in, settled. Um, if not. With you know XOR or CAT, you can do it in penalty mechanism, so that you okay. can. Let, let's take it offline because I think we're <laughs> killing everyone. But yeah. Sure. So, okay. So my understanding um, is that there in, in each factory, the confirmed factory has coins, connectors, and the factory output, um, factory chain. Yes. So, it, my, is the connector basically is that a part of the penalty mechanism that I'm able as a person who has a coin, like so, I, I, I submit an on-chain UTXO to a vector operator. I receive a coin. Is the connector a part of the mechanism, the pivoting mechanism? Is it like, because basically, in the connector to that data, I would need to be able to, like, if you try to double spin as vector operator, I can take the data from, the, I guess, the previous connector and now get the funds back to myself. Is that like what the purpose so of the your connection is? If you're sending an on-chain UTXO, right, to, to pay someone. Or um, so I like I'm already I'm in a confirmed factory. Um, I'm in a confirmed factory. In a, in right? a confirmed okay, your coin is in a confirmed. I, I have coins in a confirmed factory. Is the connector a part of the pivoting mechanism if the factory operator tries to double spin? Is, is that like the, the purpose of the connector? The connector is to come into the transaction ID mm -hmm. so that if there is a double spin, it, it breaks the it breaks your coin. Or the the, the uh, operator can no longer redeem your coin. Uh, because the connector is a part of the factory, right. and it, it, it commits to the transaction ID of the factory, so that if factory operator double spends, okay, yeah, so so the, um, the connector is is like the operative part of the pivoting mechanism. Without the connector, you wouldn't be. I wouldn't as a, as, as somebody that has a coin in the factory, I wouldn't be able to, to spend it. to spend. I wouldn't be able to penalize the Pen factory operator. Not, not the penalize. Penal penalizing is a different sort of mechanism. Uh, okay. You won't be able to Just, like okay. yeah, be factory. Scared. It's for factory operator to have an insurance, really, because factory oh. operator pays someone right with his liquidity and should be able to claim your coins. And in, in order for that factory operator to claim your coins, uh, factory operator needs that assurance. The connect, the connector. Shall we continue with the rest? Yeah. Give a yeah. round of applause. <laughs>